Hello everyone, it is Alex Mack once again, and yes, it is that time of year again. It is Christmas time. Merry Christmas, everybody. Uh, hope everybody's having a pretty good holiday so far. And you know, if you are on YouTube at all, making any kind of uh, like reviews or anything, you are sort of, but not really kind of obligated to do like top 10 lists for the year, right? And this one's kind of different. I was doing like, I did my top five favorite uh, Christmas movies and I did my top five favorite, like just movies that came out in 2022. But I, and I was going to do the same thing for this one, but I kind of liked a lot of the shows and series that was, uh, that came out this year. So yeah. And I was just looking at like everything I had listed and I'm like, oh, well, I might as well, I might as well just do a top tens. And so here we go. The, uh, top 10 favorite shows uh, that I've watched in 2022. Here we go. Okay. Yeah. And here we go. So, um, as you can see, it's, it's been a, a few things that came out this year that I really, really enjoyed. Um, and so, yeah, let's just dig into it. Uh, number 10 with Peacemaker. That is uh, on HBO Max, the uh, the John Cena led superhero. Uh, can you call that superhero or super villain <laughs> uh, show? Uh, that honestly, it's it's so it's so crass, it's so irreverent. It's um, it kind of reminds me of like an Adult Swim show set to live action. It's pretty much like the whole tone of it. And I was I was kind of here for that. Yeah, I, I liked it. I enjoyed it. Um, it j just don't take it serious. If you just want something to put on j and just turn your brain off and just kind of like have a good giggle every now and then, yeah, it's 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 Peacemaker. It's it's a really fun show, really low key, and yeah, it's, it one of my favorite things I watched this year. I wasn't expect. I don't know what I was expecting. But it wasn't that. <laughs> and so it took me kind of by surprise. And so I'm like, okay, that was pretty cool. I like that. Uh, the Boys Season 3, uh, that was like every time, every time I think they can't get any crazier, they can't get any nastier, <laughs> um, they they raised the bar. Um, yeah, this is season. So the Boys Season 3 is... A, it had like a lot more action than the first two seasons. And we get to see Homelander kind of like completely losing it too, which I was kind of waiting. Like, and I love how they did that with Homelander too. He was kind of like, he, he was kind of like a tea kettle, like just slowly started to like boil over, you know? And no, seeing, seeing him actually kind of just completely lose it was, was actually fun to see. And uh yeah we got to see a uh, uh, soldier boy not 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 that soldier boy the the soldier boy from the comic books <laughs> right but then yeah, we got to see soldier boy in here is like a pseudo uh captain america or like kind of like a douchebag captain america and yeah billy the butcher kind of like goes uh, a little bit overboard with the uh with the with the the serum they got on uh what's it called something v i, I can't remember it offhand but it was um compound v right you can like shoot it up like heroin or whatever and so yeah it was and and that orgy scene so from what I, I i haven't read the comics but from what i hear that um that the 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 superhero or whatever orgy that takes place in there it wasn't as bad as it was in the comics but still it was just like there was there was a visual in there it was just like why 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 did I need to see that? I would have gotten the point with you not showing like the whole. But yeah, that, no, that's the boys. They're gonna go there. They're gonna show you everything, and you you gonna sit there and just cringe. That's that's all you can do. Um, but yeah, that number nine is is really good. I think next season might be the last season for the boys, but um, if it is, it's it's gonna be crazy. I I can't wait for that. So yeah, that's number nine. Number eight, The Sandman. Um, yeah, another comic book adaptation. Um, this one, uh, Neil Gaiman kind of personally 
took a lot of uh the the lead on like creating the show on this and and it shows like this this the way they did this show like the tone of it from episode to episode really like it it can throw you off it, it definitely did me but i kind of want all other comic book shows to be like that because when they do that it kind of plays like like a, an issue of a comic book because you know like issues of comic books go jump from kind of like one story to the next to the next to the next but still kind of like carrying on that overarching narrative it's kind of like that connects everything and th and that's what they did so because like every like two episodes it'd be like different characters a different a different enemy uh you know and like a different story and it would like switch over like that and i was like that's actually really genius. I kind of want like all the comic book shows to be like that now. You know, we we don't have to stick with you know two or three main heroes for the the entirety of the eight hour series or whatever. You know, we can yeah bring in. It's, it's kind of like the better way to introduce a lot of uh, different characters and plots from the comic books to just kind of like give give it like an hour or two two and a half hours or whatever and just move on to the next one it's, it's pretty good but overall like yeah they they nailed it tom sturge i believe how you say it um i think he did he did a really really good job he just he wasn't bringing the menace to me he was kind of looking like a like zoolander i don't know if you remember zoolander with uh like owen wilson and uh ben stiller like whenever he had this like his serious face, he kind of looked like he was doing the Zoolander like pout pouty face. But I that that was probably just me. Um, yeah, really really enjoyed it. It looked really good, uh, really well crafted, and yeah, I can't wait for the next season. That'll be dope. Number seven, Servant, uh, is on Apple TV. First off, Apple TV is has so many like really good shows. They're, they're beating out Netflix to be, they're beating out Hulu. They're like, if you don't have Apple TV, get it. They got, they got a ton of really good shows. And Servant for me uh, is one of the craziest, weirdest, best things I've ever watched. Um, Cause it keeps you off balance and it keeps you on your toes. It keeps you guessing like the entire, this, like this is season four and it's still like, what the hell is happening? This is weird as hell, but I can't, I can't look away. I can't look away. I love it. Um, it's, uh, it's ran by M. Night Shyamalan. It's one of, uh, kind of like produced by him. Uh, and it's like the good M. Night Shyamalan too, where it's just like a bunch of weird stuff is happening. It hasn't gotten to like some crazy twist yet, but I don't know. It's, this is, it's, it's a wild ride and I can't wait for them to, uh, like land this thing. Cause it's, it's crazy. I definitely say uh, check this out if you're looking for like a uh, kind of like a mystery suspense that's kind of eerie as well. Um, they, yeah, they, man, get Apple TV. Check out Servant. It's it's bizarre. Number six, Abbott Elementary. Oh yeah, definitely one of the favorite my favorite things I've seen in a long time as far as like a sitcom goes. Um, came out of nowhere too uh is uh ran by quinta Brun brunson who i think has youtube ties too i think she kind of like started out in youtube and man it's 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 funny it's it's grounded it has so much heart and it shines a light on like teachers in uh in elementary school and like you know watching it i it can't help but kind of draw me back to like uh my days in elementary school and you know, remembering all the teachers and you know just uh like the the just the weird day-to- days we go through like all the assemblies everybody gotta like you know uh just con convene in the in the cafeteria for some some like lame assembly or whatever whatever but no it is it is really good show it's really funny again it's it has such heart to it so and and it's it's funny it's actually really funny yeah, it's it's really well acted. It has uh Quinta Brunson, I think I said already, uh Jason or I'm sorry, and uh Tyler James Wilson from uh Everybody Hates Chris fame and and is uh famously now uh for the show that 
finally got a Shirley Ralph like a uh, uh, Emmy award. Like she deserves all the awards. She's been killing it for a while. I remember seeing her way back uh, in that Eddie Murphy movie, um, Distinguished Gentleman. I think it was when like he he was uh, Eddie Murphy was playing like a con man that was running for office or something like that. Yeah, I remember seeing her way back then and then she kind of like disappeared. But I guess she was on like doing like stage and all that. But yeah, it was seeing her in this again. I'm like, hey, hey, she's she's back. She's doing stuff. And then uh, having her win like uh, an award for this is like really fitting. And I loved it because yeah, I love the show. Like this is this is a really good show. Um, I'm watching season two now. And yeah, man, I, yeah, I love the show. It came out of nowhere. Right. And it's just like, yeah, I'm, that. So they are still making good sitcoms on TV nowadays. Like, thank, thank God, you know. So cracking my top five, as you can see, will be Cyberpunk Edge Runners. Um, I, I am a huge fan of the games. I know it's it's a very flawed game, but I I'm playing it on my uh, PC, so that kind of it's it's a the game is buggy as hell. But I'm playing like the best version of a, of a buggy game, if that makes sense. Um, but what they were able to nail in the, in the game is night city, like the, the world of night city. Uh, it's, it's so kind of fully realized and I, I, I love, I loved it. Like I've come back time and time and time again to play the game just to kind of like explore night city and walk around. And they put, they put, they pack a lot into the game, but it's, it's so good that I want more honestly. And so <clears throat> knowing that like the the anime was coming out i was all over it like yeah I, I watched i watched the whole thing in like the first weekend or whatever and plus it's like that good it's like really really good really solid anime and i love how it, it kind of enhances the source material too uh like like in the game they have this thing called a uh, cyber psychosis and while you you do come in contact with with uh, people who have cyber psychosis in the game, you, you kind of like have to fight them or whatever. But yeah, I was wondering like what what would that like what would that be like to actually like go through like you know the the cyber psychosis thing, and like that that's pretty much what the story of uh, Edge Runners is. Um, uh, this uh, seventeen year old kid named David Martinez, I want to say. Um, uh, is who's kind of like struggling, you know, day to day as one would do in Night City. Um, and uh, there's a very tragic event that happens to him uh, very early on in the ser in the ser series, and he uh, and he uh, kind of goes into a deep dive of uh, you know edge running and uh, like chroming himself, like getting like these uh, kind of like cybernetic implants in himself and um and yeah this the, the looming threat over everyone's head who gets the um gets like uh like the cybernetic implants is a uh, cyber psychosis and it's it's like if you have the money for the medicine you can prolong it but i think it's it's just like a matter of time <laughs> a matter of time basically before um it catches up to you and man the anime is is great the, the characters in here is great I, I love it. It's it's the one thing that kind of brought me back in the anime because I had stopped watching anime for a couple of years now. I just it wasn't nothing that actually kind of like grabbed my attention to like pull me in. This this did it though. This this actually got me back in the anime. And yeah, it's one of the best, not only just one of the best animes, one of the best things I've seen on TV like all year and in a couple of years. So yeah, that's I love it. Number four, <clears throat> Closet of Curiosities by uh, Guillermo del Toro. And I love this. I love this show. It's an anthology horror show in the same vein of uh, Tales from the Crypt from like back in the day. And I've been yearning for <laughs> like a new Tales from the Crypt or a new Tales from the Crypt type show. And finally got it with Guillermo del Toro's Closet of Curiosities. It's I think it's about seven or eight uh, episodes of like an anthology series, so like different random kind of like stories or whatever. And there, there are there are definitely stories that are better than others. I would say um, probably my favorite would be uh, the autopsy one. Is man, that's like an instant classic. Um, 
the last one with uh that really weird one with like uh, Eric Andre and uh Rutger Howard. No, not Rutger Howard. Uh, Peter Weller and uh, Peter Weller in it. And yeah, that was that one was like really bizarre and twisted. It's, it's kind of a slow burn, but yeah, I, I was into it. I love that kind of thing. Um, and so he also did two. He um adapted two uh Lovecraft stories in this as well, which was actually really well done. They were they were really cool. And yeah, the like I don't all of the episodes are like really really strong. I I, I really loved the show. The the only one I would say probably was the weakest. I was probably the one with um the 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 lady who was um with the cream who was trying to like you know get some like beauty cream or whatever. Like it was a good episode, but the ending threw me. I didn't understand what the ending was supposed to say, but and that that was a good episode. And, and to me, that was like the weakest one, but that's still like super strong uh, compared to like every other show out there. Um, so yeah. If you're into like if you like Tales of the Crypt from back in the day, if you're looking for like a horror anthology show, and why wouldn't you, right? Uh, yeah, Closet of Curiosities on Netflix. Check it out. It's it's excellent, like excellent, excellent. Number three, another Apple TV show. Uh, Severance is it, 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 this became one of my favorite shows on TV. Like it 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 got up there for me. Uh, this. It's, it's, it's basically like uh, there's a company that will do a procedure on you called uh, severance. So it will separate, they implant something in your brain that separates your work you from your out of work you. And so like, uh, you know, when you get ready to go into work, uh, you, you go in the elevator and something kind of like takes over your brain and like you just work. The, your your other consciousness like works in the day job and that's all they know <laughs> like all they know is just work like that's it and as much of a hell as that sounds like <laughs> and i don't know why people would do that i don't i maybe it's me looking way too much into it though but i got like shades of kind of like this uh mk ultra uh kind of message in there as well as far as controlling a, a portion of your mind and kind of like white trying to wipe away a whole nother side of you so so the oh, one side of you is just totally like able to be controlled right and that might just be me like just looking into it kind of crazy but i i was picking up all these like different hints and stuff in there like like the like the conditioning of the workers like you know oh if you meet this quota you'll get You'll get a, a what do they call it? Like a, a shrimp, a shrimp social, right? You get a shrimp social and make that like this huge thing, and it's just like what three pieces of shrimp and a, and a lemonade, and bam, that's all you get for all your hard work, right? And it's just, yeah, it's man, it's, it's I, I love it. Again, it's an Apple TV show. Apple TV has some of the best shows out there. Like I, I was sleeping on them for a while, but then like I was started watching Servant. It's like this is insane. Let me. What else they got on here? And I, and I saw Servant uh, Severance, and yeah, it's, it's one of the best things I've seen on television. It's check it out. Like uh, it's star Adam McKay in here is uh, really good. Like I, I've never seen him do like a serious role like that. He's always been in these kind of like uh, off ball comedies. Excellent. Like super, <laughs> he is excellent in this. And, and um, you know uh, John Turturro again. Uh, is in this as well, and and a bit uh, part in here with uh, Christopher Walken, too. Um, that that was a surprise, but yeah, I I highly recommend checking out Severance on Apple TV. It's 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 really really good. Number two, uh, House of the Dragon. I, I recently did a review on this, like uh, about two weeks ago or something like that. Um, yeah, I to me i like this a lot better than the original game of thrones and it's it's only because the original game of thrones had so many characters in it and like you would have to it's very easy to get lost watching the the original series but this one is is more toned down like the this there's less characters it's more focused to me and there's dra we actually have dragons in this one like you have to wait 
years before like the actual dragon showed up in the original one but in this one we had the dragon pretty much from the jump and so i'm like yes yes all right there we we in there and matt smith say no more <laughs> and stranger things season four is my number one because that show shouldn't work like th that's a show that just really shouldn't work i think each episode was like an hour and a half it was like a movie uh, episode but they they nailed it like i did uh i did a review of this earlier this year uh on the uh a a podcast channel and i i i did, i'm not sure if i gave it a four or a five but it, it was i, I might have given it a five because they yeah they they nailed it like every character like they had so many like teams of characters doing so many different things doing their own kind of like side story and it took up it was so much there was a lot of things that didn't need to be in there that they could have cut but the way they kind of like just brought everything together at the end man yeah it was i was like that they did it again they did it again how how do they keep doing this like I would say season three was a little bit of a drop off. It was still solid, but it was a little bit of a drop off. But no, they they came right back. They, man, they came right back with this one. And I just, Eddie, man, Eddie, uh, Eddie, you my boy. <laughs> uh, but yeah, <clears throat> so yeah, there we have it. There is my uh a top 10 list of uh, TV shows I saw this year. TV was kicking. TV was kicking more than movies. Honestly, like it was kind of like, why, why do I need to go to a theater? I'm getting like quality entertainment right here in my living room. And yeah. So yeah, there we go. My top 10 TV shows of 2022.